Life is like a roller coaster. Sometimes it goes up, sometimes it goes down, and sometimes it's in the news because there's been a terrible crash. What you gotta understand is that the ups and downs are polar opposite states of mind. When you're on an up, you're energized, you've got plans, you've got projects, you know where you want to be and you know how to get there. The lows, on the other hand, are more like wastelands. Everything's dead, everything's chaos, you know you're not supposed to be there, but you also don't know how to get out of there. What you need is a way to get out of the wastelands and back onto the tracks. And I'm gonna show you how to do that. Before you even allow your mind to start nagging on your self-esteem by calling yourself lazy or a good for nothing, I want you to have your blood drawn. Especially if you're a woman. They have your hormones checked, have your thyroid checked, check for insulin resistance, check for PCOS, anything that can mess with your hormones and make you feel miserable and less energized. Because I personally cannot even count the amounts of times where I felt like I'm the problem, I'm the failure, and it has just been my hormones that had been out of whack and just needed readjustment in the medication. You're not gonna waste your time the way I did. So have your blood checked. The roller coaster has crashed. There's chaos. People are shouting. And you own the amusement park. So this means it's your duty to restore order. First, you're gonna go get yourself a large piece of paper, a pen, maybe a marker, and a non-alcoholic beverage of your own choosing. Because now we're gonna start unraveling all these screaming voices. Now you hear all these screaming voices in the amusement park calling for your action, but you can't really single them out. You can't really act on any of them because that's just a loud, noisy mess. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna pick out a single voice and put that onto paper. Pick out a thought and put that onto paper. Pick out the next thought and put that onto paper. And you're gonna be as non-judgmental as possible because this is not about judging what you're thinking. This is about realizing that this is a thought you're having. Now in this mind map, you have an overview of all the nagging thoughts that you have about yourself. What I want you to do is check if you can categorize them. Can you group them differently to be more matching? And if that is possible, do that. This is Sylvia's mind map. So that does not really exist, but for the sake of today, we're gonna have Sylvia and this is her mind map. Now she has written down the reasons why her life sucks. And these are all the black points. Luckily, because she's been using the mind map method, which is proven to be the best method for this one, she also has categories for each and everything. She has a career category, a relationship category, and a body category. And for each and every category, she has written down what sucks. I want you to pick out a category at random and search for the underlying root cause of that problem. Let's take relationship. So for relationship, Sylvia has written down that She's been feeling lonely in her relationship, that they have been living sort of like separate lives, that they haven't had a date night since last April, and they haven't had sex in two months. Which sucks. I get that. If we look at all of these points that Sylvia has mentioned, we can clearly see that there's one thing that all of these points have in common. There is not enough time spent together both intimate as well as not intimate. If we were to write down a why, that why would clearly be not enough time spent together. Then move on to the next cluster of problems and on to the next one after that. So for each cluster of how you suck, you're gonna know the why I suck as well. Body-wise, she has written down that she's aged 20 years in three months. Her nails are brittle, her hair is dry, her teeth are crooked, her hips hurt. Obviously, there seems to be something wrong. And we don't know what that thing is that is going wrong, but obviously there is something wrong. So our why is something is going wrong. Now, the last area that Sylvia has categorized is career. And for her career, she's written down that she's sad every morning because she doesn't want to go to work. She's the only one who hasn't gotten a raise so far. She has issues focusing on her tasks and she sits alone during lunch break. Now, if we look at these points that she's mentioned, there's structure to it. So obviously you would be sad every morning to go to work if you would be sitting alone, if you were the only one who hadn't gotten a raise so far, and if you've had issues focusing on your tasks. Either they don't really know her, so she's always ignored when it comes to race because nobody remembers her, which would tie in with her sitting alone, or maybe she hasn't gotten a raise so far because she has issues focusing on her tasks and maybe she's been doing something wrong, which might mean that right now her quality of work is not up to standard to deserve a raise. The first why is my work is not good enough. And the second why is they don't know I exist. 
Sometimes when we're establishing the root causes of why we suck, we discover that the root cause for each and every area of suckiness is the same, which is great because it means that there's just one thing that we actually need to address later on. If that is not the case, that's fine. We're gonna address that differently then. So now within this overview, you have how you suck, why you suck. The next thing we're gonna do is how to unsuck ourselves. So now we have probable whys, why these areas in Sylvia's life suck. And except for the career where we have two probable whys, we have one why for each category, which is great. The next thing Sylvia has to do is select one category that she would like to work on and start solving the problem. So this is Sylvia's relationship. We have looked at how Sylvia's relationship sucks right now and we have established a probable why, which is we're not spending enough time together. Now, how do we solve this problem? She should talk to her partner first because a relationship is not one-sided. So if she feels lonely, maybe her partner feels lonely as well. They haven't had a date since forever. They haven't had sex in forever. They're not spending time. So maybe they can set up a date night. Every Tuesday, maybe you go out to dinner. Maybe you cook something together. Maybe you watch a movie, a regular date night. And then of course, there's the big guns like couples counseling, maybe a retreat together. Or maybe, depending on what type of couple you are, you might want to try swinging. That is how her relationship sucks. That is why that sucks. And now that we have the why, we can establish things that we can do to solve that why. And we can do this for each and every category, even for the body one. Her why here is, there's clearly something wrong here. What can Sylvia do? She can get her blood work done, check for vitamin deficiency. She can, of course, go see a specialist, whatever that may be, that may be a nail technician, a hairstylist, whoever responsible for that. And she can, of course, save money to fix these issues. Maybe you want to have your teeth straightened. Maybe you want to have a new hairstyle and go to that fancy salon. Maybe you want a nail technician do your nails regularly. Or maybe you want to have a facelifting. We're not here to judge. Now, with Silky's career, there have been two possible reasons why things might be wrong. Maybe her work is not good enough. Maybe they don't know that she exists. So what can she do to solve that? Sylvia could talk to a supervisor. She could also put herself out there more. Maybe there's a way she could join them at lunch. And she could also check the quality of her work. Maybe there's too many errors. Maybe she's not good on the deadline. You can also find a new job. Because maybe Sylvia's boss is just a sexist prick who only gives a raise to the big chested employees. And Sylvia never had a chance with her flat titties. That is a possibility. The important thing is that you now have an overview of how you suck, why you suck, and which actionable steps you can take to unsuck yourself. Yes, and I heard that it sounds dirty, which is why I'm gonna keep using that. Unsuck yourself. Even if you don't know how to solve a problem, you can still think of a person or an agency or whatever you can ask to help you solve that problem. Because no one expects you to actually solve all your problems by yourself. You just need to know who to ask, where to look. Now you gotta decide if you wanna do this for just one category and fix one problem at a time, or write this down for each and every category so that you have that. No matter what you decide on, the end result is gonna be the same. You're gonna have your action plan. Sometimes you'll find that the solutions to the problems are all things that you've already tried and failed at. And there might be several reasons for that. The first most obvious reason is you're burning through your energy reserves. Sometimes we know what we need to do and we do all of that at once, which means that we can do this for a week, maybe two tops, and then we're completely burned out. Especially if you have Hashimoto's disease, we tend to overdo things, especially physical activities, and then we get sick real quickly. A second reason why that might not work is because you simply cannot establish a proper routine or habits, or in other words, ADHD. That is mostly the case if you do something for a while and it helps you and then you get bored of doing that and then the thought of doing that makes you want to puke. And if that is the case, then guess what? That's your root cause of problem. Either ADHD and you need to solve that, learn to live with that, or overdoing it and you need to do less. Creating a mind map in your head, an overview of all these things that are bugging you should always be your first step to fixing yourself because that is the only way you can really see if there's something that needs to be fixed and what needs to be fixed. And then you can establish the how. Once your thoughts and all these things that are bugging you are onto paper, you'll feel way lighter and you'll also be way more clearer in your head. And herein lies a danger. 
The moment we feel emotionally lighter, we oftentimes stop putting to action the plan and then a week later we'll feel shitty again. Not only start working on your action plans on your to-do lists that you have created based on each root problem, but I also want you to set up checkup dates. This can be once a month, once a week, once every other week, but do that. And when you're having your checkup date, there's questions you can ask yourself. I wrote some down, some that I oftentimes ask myself. How have I felt switching up a few things? Have I done my doctor's appointments yet? How easy was it to keep a new routine? And by the way, this is all things where a bullet journal comes in handy. Most importantly, remember that your goal is to feel less sucky, not to feel more sucky. So check if all these steps you're taking are actually helping you in feeling better or are rather causing you to feel worse. Because if that is the case, you're gonna wanna stop right there. If you suck at university, your problem could be, I don't have enough time to study because I also have to work, which is a problem you can address. If you suck at university, your problem could also be, I'm a dumb, stupid bitch who's too stupid to study. That's your hormones because you're not really a dumb, stupid bitch who's unable to study. But if that is the only solution to your problem you can think of, then that's your hormones. Because if your hormones are not working as they should, you're gonna see things way bleaker and way darker than they really are, which is when you cannot find a solution to your problem. And your mind map will show you that. As I have said before, I have tried this method about a thousand times and each and every time it has been helpful to me. So you shouldn't miss that out. My name is Christina, this is Luftig Frei. Don't forget to subscribe. See you in the next video. Driving through days and nights Won't stop for traffic lights